Okay, so this is going to be a breakdown video about my latest video in London, which was made up entirely of hyperlapses and time lapses using raw photos. So if you've never shot a hyperlapse before or you don't know what one is, I suggest you go and watch this tutorial I made on how to do one. I'll show you how to do one handheld and you'll get the basic principles from that and then you can come back and uh, watch the rest of this video. I'll link it in the cards and down below. All right, so let's start with a git. So my main setup for the hyperlapse shots was this Serio monopod, a Weebless gimbal sitting on top of the monopod, and then I used the Sony a7 III camera with a Tamron 17-28mm 2.8 lens and a intravelometer made by Newer. Now I'm putting this uh, we Zhiyun Weibo S on top of the on top of the Syria monopod just for a bit of extra stabilization and also because I mentioned earlier I don't really like to pan and tilt um, with this monopod so I find it better to use the joystick on the on the gimbal itself to move little bits here and there and it just moves a lot nicer and smoother and easier and I don't lose the, the middle fixed point as often that's it really just experimenting with using this over handheld or just using a tripod itself and see how it goes so the intervalometer i prefer to use the intervalometer because it always allows me to take pictures while having my hands still on the monopod at a comfortable waist height so another important thing that i had was a nd filter and i used this polar pro six to nine stop 67 millimeter filter thread nd filter and a couple of pieces of gear which i didn't use a lot but i should mention it is that i did use a tripod for a couple of the static time lapses and a 7200 millimeter sigma for a couple of the static time lapses as well so the extent of my planning was not that impressive if i'm being honest i wrote down a list of quite a few areas in the city that i thought would be good to get hyperlapse shots and i also had quite a few shots that i wanted to try and that was about it i sometimes find that for me personally if I sit down at home and obsess over every detail in a planning process of a video, it can often put me off from going out and actually shooting the video, as I either get stuck or find reasons why certain things won't work rather than actually trying things out. So for an experimental video like this, I quite often just pick up my gear, get to the location, sit down, have a coffee and a biscuit, and think of ideas whilst I'm actually there. Not saying this method is for everyone, but as far as what I've tried so far, this seems to work the best for me. Uh, Post-production music and sound effects were from epidemic sound and you can check them out below if you wanted to get a 30 day free trial if you're interested all right so i thought it'd be good to maybe just go through the video together and do a kind of shot by shot breakdown and just explain an overall process of how i got each shot and just my thought process behind it so the shot one which is this sunrise time lapse so this sunrise time lapse was shot on a tripod which took about three hours to shoot in total and my intention was to shoot it before the sun started to rise which i sort of actually managed to do i actually woke up at 2 45 a.m but due to a little bit of poor planning with the sunrise position and the app that i was using i had the framing slightly off so I had to start again which was a bit frustrating but i went with it because i definitely wasn't going to wake up at 2 45 a.m again so with this kind of time lapse camera settings wise I was actually just adjusting the shutter speed as the conditions got brighter and the sun came up to make sure that I stayed at minus 0.3 on the Sony meter and it was taking a picture I believe once every 15 seconds so around four pictures a minute for this sunrise time lapse again as I mentioned before I was using manual focus and manual white balance which was set to shade the focal length for this shot was at about 20 millimeters I believe so I wanted to actually get the sun to pass through the London eye before I would start to move the camera position it was coming up to the time when I actually needed to pay for parking in central London and that can be very expensive and I'm a pretty cheap bloke so I thought that would be enough. So then I began the next part of the shot which was to pan over to the building directly in front of the river. To use this using photos I would simply just pan slightly across, take a picture, pan very slightly across again and repeat this process for as many pictures as it took to make sure that I got to my new fixed point on the building. Once I got to the new point where I knew I wanted to start a new time lapse, I actually wanted to start a forward zoom time lapse. And to do this, I had my camera and lens set to 20 millimeters as it was before, and I took a picture. I then zoomed in to 20.5 millimeters or maybe 21 millimeters and took another picture and repeated this process until I got to the end of the lens, which was at 28 millimeters swapped out the lenses put on my 28 to 75 and i repeat this process so 29 millimeters take a picture 30 millimeters take a picture just making sure that i was just zooming in and everything was still 
in manual focus and I was checking my focus for each, between each picture and that was my process for getting a zoom in time lapse here. Once I got to the 75 millimeters, I then swapped out to the telephoto 7200 Sigma set to 75 or 76 and began that process again all the way up to 200. 200 millimeters actually wasn't long enough to reach the building on the other side. I actually do wish I had a longer 300 millimeter lens, but 200 millimeters was the maximum that I had. So in post, I did really have to use the 6K resolution on the A7 III photos to make sure that I could scale into the next shot through the window. So the next shot was the corridor shot, which is actually just stock footage. I wanted to get the hyperlapse in a long corridor, but with most establishments here in London still being closed at this point, I wasn't able to achieve it in any location. So I just thought I would get a HD clip online from Shutterstock. And it wasn't actually how I imagined it to be, but it was kind of the best thing I could find and it worked out okay. So the next shot is a shot here on Millennium Bridge, which is just a hyperlapse. So this shot, this hyperlapse shot is using the method that I talked about in the beginning with the monopod and gimbal and intervalometer. I would find my fixed point, which stays at the same point in the frame throughout the shot, line it up, take a picture, take a step forward, line up the fixed point again and take another picture and so on until I got to the end of the hyperlapse. Once I got to the end of the bridge here, I used a quick hyper zoom method of a wide static time lapse. I've actually made a tutorial on this process, which I will link in the cards and down in the description below as well. So you can see exactly how I would go about getting a shot like this. The next shot was actually the same shot, same kind of shot. And in editing, I put the shot, this shot behind the cathedral and it was basically a, another hyper zoom that was just reversed and once the zoom had finished it would then move into a sideways hyperlapse that went behind a wall so that i knew that i had something to transition to into the next shot next shot was just a simple shot of the boat that was going from side to side and this was actually done on a tripod as you can see from this footage shot here by my friend carlton brunton from brunton media i was actually using his tripod as well as i forgot to bring mine so again this was done by taking photos of the boat with a fixed point staying on the boat and then stabilizing around that point in post like you would do with a regular hyperlapse. This time I had my intervalometer set to constantly take pictures at about one second apart and with a shorter shutter speed to avoid too much motion blur which can make stabilizing in post quite tough. Next shot was a shot of Buckingham Palace and I used a monopod and gimbal setup like I would normally do. I started off the shot with a whip pan and again the way to do this is to just take a picture, move the joystick on the gimbal slightly to the right, take another picture, repeat this process until I get to the fixed point that I want on the building which is Buckingham Palace and then begin my hyperlapse process which would be to take a picture, move one step to the right, take another picture and repeat this process keeping my fixed point in the same part of the frame the whole time that is the most important thing so the next shot was a slightly further back shot getting the statue in front of buckingham palace and it was exactly the same process again of taking a hyperlapse taking a step to one side making sure i have my fixed point on the statue and then finally when i would see the map fully in frame i would then just be taking pictures whilst taking a step forward walking into the frame of the map knowing that in post i could then mask out that map and use a, another shot in there to transition into so the next shot was a simple hyperlapse going towards tower bridge um, and then when i got to the end of the hyperlapse i then started to pan up the camera by taking a picture panning up slightly again taking a picture until the bridge was out of frame and it was just a sky left in the shot so the next shot here entering into the car was actually just using video and my gimbal so i started with my gimbal facing up for a few seconds and then moving forward into the car and then by masking out the window in post i was able to move inside the car I then securely set up my tripod in the boot of the car and with the camera and intervalometer took a picture every second with about a half a second shutter speed I believe to get good chaos style motion blur of the streets while the car stays sharp and the same method to mask out the front window to move out of the car. Then this hyperlapse of Chinatown which is pretty simple just uh, moving to a fixed point on the sign. The next shot was actually just a hyperlapse on Tower Bridge itself and this was moving forward out of the back of a stairwell for a possible transition and moving forward towards a fixed point on the bridge. And then I actually did reverse the shot in post so that I could connect the two hyperlapses between Chinatown and Tower Bridge and into a next shot, which was a side to side hyperlapse of Trafalgar Square. And then eventually using one of the pillars to mask out to the next shot, which was a hyperlapse at Horse Guards Parade. 
and this time I went all the way through passing through the gate and in post just masked out the archway so that I'll be able to transition into a new forward flowing shot and try to make it as seamless as possible. And that was moving into a hyperlapse inside Regent's Park, just down a middle of a pathway inside Regent's Park, and then using a transition of, call something, I'd call it like building the frame transition. Basically, you've got the sides, the road, and then the sky coming in all at different times to kind of make up a new frame that will then transition to a new hyperlapse. And some people have asked me about this transition which uh, I will make a tutorial on and post up on the channel at some point so make sure you look out for that shouldn't be too long but yeah I will do that because it will be a bit too long to explain here and that was going here in towards this statue of hyperlapse that was then I had to move down some stairs but I was using the top of the statue as my fixed point the whole time and then when I got down to the bottom of the stairs I just went backwards and then used the method of panning to the left which will allow me to do a whip transition into another shot and that next shot was another shot of a statue in the middle of a busy road but basically again it's a hyperlapse using a long shot speed to emphasize motion blur of the traffic and going in a semicircular motion into the next clip which is masked in and going into the same sideways motion and that next clip was the London Eye hyperlapse just going from side to side and then a transition where I had a statue come in a little bit earlier for a few frames before we actually see the rest of the next shot and then it just into a reverse hyperlapse that passes by something in the foreground which again I used to transition into a next shot which was going into the same direction of a clock tower where I was beginning to go side to side and then up some stairs and this part was a little bit tricky to stay on the fixed point of the tower of the clock just because I did get blocked but in this situation I just tried to match up as close as I can my fixed point to the clock without actually even being able to see it and maybe just doing a few little adjustments manually in post it managed to look somewhat decent while I was going up the stairs I then used a morphing transition to be able to morph from this clock tower to another clock tower and for this one I was kind of going side to side again and then a little bit backwards down the road and then yeah I then masked out the middle of marble arch which is definitely not the best masking transition in the world but I was a little bit stuck in post at this point and the lack of footage kind of meant I kind of had to try and make this one work as best I could going backwards a hyperlapse of marble arch with with then a tree coming into the shot moving into the next shot which is a semicircle of the theatre which is showing Harry Potter inside Leicester Square and then the next shot after that was a POV shot using the gimbal um, and this was just done in video so the area I was actually in had quite a bit of security knocking around so I didn't want to be using my monopod and things like that so I just made sure that I got a quick POV shot in video mode using the Weeble S from around the side of the building and rolling the camera till it's horizontal around the pillar. The next shot was then a simple alleyway hyperlapse where I used the window as the fixed point moving towards and I reversed and masked out the bottom half of the archway so that I can transition from the previous POV shot. Then again I tried to merge that into another alley shot going backwards with the pan to the right to transition into the final shot which also began with a pan to the right and a short hyperlapse to the right and into a final time lapse of the Thames River. So there we go, uh, not perfect by any means, and there were definitely a lot of things I could have done better overall, but for a first try at a kind of flow motion type video using hyperlapses and time lapses only, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out. And like I said, look out for a couple of future tutorials where I'll go through a few of the transitions in this video in how I edited them into more detail and that's what will be coming up next and yeah thanks so much for watching again like I mentioned before there'll be links to various things that I talked about in the description if you wanted to go and check those out tutorials gear all that sort of stuff thanks a lot for watching and I shall see you in the next video take care